Hey, this is Elijah with the Oxygen team, and in today's video, we're gonna be building an image comparison slider element, kind of a before and after thing like you see here. Note that this is the element that is in our composite elements library, but we've recently revamped it and streamlined the code. So now I wanna show you how to build one of these from scratch in Oxygen. So let's jump into our Oxygen builder and we'll get started. So I'm gonna drop in a section just to give us a container to work with, and then we'll add a div. This will be our image comparison div. So let's go ahead and give this a class. I'll just call it comparison. And we definitely want this to be 100% width. And because the way we're gonna build this, we also want it to be set to position relative so that we can absolutely position some elements inside of it. So let's go to advanced layout, and we're gonna go down to position, choose absolute, or actually choose relative. We'll do absolute on some of the elements inside this container, but this container itself needs to be set to relative. Now we're gonna drop in an image element. So we're gonna search for image and click it to insert it. Now let's go ahead and browse and pick our before image. So let's pick this kind of icy looking forest here, and let's go ahead and add a class to this image. We'll call it comparison underscore underscore image. Now, a couple of things we need to do to this, nothing too intense. We're just gonna set the width and height to 100%. This will help kind of keep everything sized properly as we continue to work. Now we can go ahead and duplicate this image and let's drop in our after image, which will be this uh, much more pleasant looking forest. Now this one we're gonna do a bit more with, so we're gonna add another class. We're gonna call the class comparison underscore underscore image dash dash because we're modifying that base class after and drop that on. Now the primary thing this class is gonna do for us is we're gonna go to advanced layout and set this image to position absolute so that everything kind of sits right on top of each other. Now we're also gonna need an icon in the middle, so let's drop in an icon, and let's do a couple of arrows maybe. Let's just look for arrow and see what we have. So yeah, let's do this left and right arrow here. Let's set it to solid, set the background color to a white-ish color, and then black for the arrows themselves. And then let's go to advanced layout and set the Z-index to something like 10. And then let's go and adjust the size. We want the icon size to be about 32 pixels and the space around the icon to be 10 pixels. Now we can also add a class to this if we want to. Just to be consistent, let's go ahead and swap all this styling over to a class. So we'll do comparison underscore underscore icon. Then we're gonna copy all the styles from the ID to the class. Then we're gonna clear the ID. Perfect, now let's go and position this. So let's go to advanced layout and set it to position absolute. Now we're gonna control most of the positioning with the container, so let's do that first. Let's open up our structure pane. You can see what we have here so far. It's just three elements inside of this container. So let's make sure everything is just centered horizontally and vertically, perfect. So the next thing we wanna do is add our labels for the before and after. So we'll add a text element and let's add a class of comparison underscore underscore label and drop that in. Now we just wanna raise the Z index on this so that we can see what we're doing. We'll set it to something like 10 and we'll wanna set it to absolute positioning. Now, because we want these positioned differently, we are gonna have to add a modifier class, but let's go ahead and do the other common styling really quickly. So let's go to size and spacing. Let's add eight pixels of padding on the top and bottom, 16 on the left and right. And let's set the background color to something not quite white, but close. And then let's just change the text to say before. And now we can add our modifier class. So we'll do comparison underscore underscore label dash dash before. And we'll go to advanced layout position absolute and we'll do 16 on the top and 16 on the left. Now we'll duplicate this. We will make another class called comparison underscore underscore label dash dash after, and we'll remove the before one from this element. And we'll go to advanced layout, position absolute, 
and do top 16 and write 16. And now we'll say after on this label. Let's go ahead and save our work here. And now we're gonna be jumping in to some code. So let's select our container and let's add a code block. And the first thing I wanna do is just some simple CSS to get everything set up. Let's switch the editor theme here and let's jump in. We're gonna do comparison and comparison with a wildcard selector here so that anything inside comparison also gets these styles. And we're gonna give this touch-action none. This prevents some unwanted kind of scrolling behavior where if you're dragging the image comparison to the left and right, we don't also want the page scrolling up and down. So this kind of takes care of that. We also have some housekeeping with the images themselves. So we'll do comparison underscore underscore image. And on these, we want something called user dash select set to none. That makes it so that when we're dragging over top of the image, we're not actually going to highlight the image like you normally would in other situations. And then we'll set the object fit on the images to cover. This will help everything kind of stay looking reasonable if the dimensions change. Now we're going to start doing some more interesting things. So we're going to do comparison image after, and we're going to use clip path to get our before and after effect. So we're going to set clip path to inset, which allows us to get a square clip path, 0%, 0%, 0%, 50%. ,000%. And now you can see we have that kind of before after effect. It doesn't move yet, but the initial state is set up. And now we want to address our icon a bit. So we're going to do comparison underscore underscore icon. And on this, we just want to set the cursor to a pointer and user select to none. That's all the CSS we need here. Now the rest of it's going to be JavaScript. So let's save and let's go to our PHP and HTML tab and get rid of this. And now let's jump over to our JavaScript and get started. No, we're not going to use any jQuery or any third party libraries here. This is all going to be vanilla JavaScript. So the first thing we need to do is we need to select all of our image comparison elements. So we'll do document.query selector all. And we'll pass in the comparison class as our selector. Then for each of those, we want to do some stuff. So comp is gonna be the stand-in for the current image comparison element that we're working with. And just oxygen stuff, we're gonna go ahead and do if window.angular return, that gets us out of this JavaScript if we're in the builder, because it can get a little crazy if this script is running in the builder, we don't want that. Now we're gonna be working with a data attribute to control the state of whether the image comparison slider is being slid left and right or not. So the first thing we wanna do is set the attribute data-dragging to false on the comparison container. So we'll do comp.set attribute data-dragging false. Now we're gonna do a couple of things on some pointer events. Now I'm using pointer events here and I'll show you what I mean. We're gonna do comp.add event listener pointer down. And the reason I'm not using mouse down or mouse up is because those are specific to the mouse. And yes, they sometimes work for touch devices, but pointer events are much better suited for both mouse and touchscreen interfaces. So it saves us some work. So we're gonna do a little arrow function here. And when the pointer is down, we want to first e.prevent default. This prevents the default action of the event. And then instead of that, we're gonna do comp.set attribute. And we're gonna set data-dragging to true. And now we just need to do the opposite of this when the pointer is up. So let's copy and paste that. We'll do a shift tab after highlighting it all to organize it a bit. And then we'll change pointer down to pointer up. And then data dragon, that's definitely not the right name. Let's fix that real quick. Data dash dragging. This needs to be set to false when the pointer comes up. So we'll set that to false and that will stop the dragging effect. 
Now we're going to handle the actual movement of the pointer. So we'll do comp .add event listener pointer move. And then we're going to do another little arrow function here. And within this, we're going to go ahead and handle what happens when the pointer moves. Well, the first thing is we want to see if we are supposed to be dragging. So we're going to do if comp dot get attribute data dash dragging does not equal true, then we're going to return. That'll keep this code from running. So basically, if the pointer is moving, but data dash dragging is not true, meaning we haven't actually clicked and held, then it's not going to do anything. So let's go past that. That's just an initial check. Now we're going to go ahead and do an event dot prevent default, which again, just prevents the default action of the event from getting in our way. And now we need to set up a bunch of variables. So we're going to do let image before equal comp dot query selector. And actually I'm going to rename this because we're working with the after image element and not the before image element. So we're going to do image after. And then back to here, comp.querySelector, which is just going to look for something within the comp element, which is our comparison container. And all we want to look for is that comparison underscore underscore image dash dash after. Now we want to get the uh, bounding client rectangle of the image comparison element itself. So we'll set let image rect to comp.get bounding client rect. This is going to give us the ability to see the dimensions of this element and work with them. Now we want to set let image width to comp dot offset width. This will tell us the width of our comparison container itself. Now we're going to start doing some calculations. So let image mouse X equal E dot client X. That's the position of our mouse on the X axis in the window but we're going to remove from that number the image rect dot left, which will mean that when our mouse pointer is on the left border of our image comparison element, image mouse X will be zero. When it's on the right border, it will be the width of the image. This is important because we want our slider effect to work even if the image is not 100% the width of the viewport. So this just sets all those numbers up for us. Now we're going to do something and get a percentage out of this mouse position. So we'll do let image percent equal. And we're going to use some parentheses here to wrap some of these variables and these math functions we're doing. So we'll do image mouse X divided by image width, and then to turn it into a percentage times 100. So we've set up all of our variables. Now there's one last check I want to do here. If image mouse X is less than or equal to zero or image mouse X is greater than or equal to the image width we want to return. So basically you're not going to be able to keep dragging while you're outside of the element because then you could drag the icon off and it can cause some problems with the viewport width. Now we can actually set up the clip path on our after element based on where our mouse is while it's clicking and dragging. So the way we're going to do this is we're going to say image after dot style dot clip path equals. And then in here, we're going to do inset 0%, 0%, 0%. And then we're going to concatenate a value in here. So I'm going to do my parentheses here, add a percent sign over here. And then we're going to do a plus and plus. And then between the pluses, we can go ahead and put in our variable name, which is going to be image percent. Now we need to handle the icons position. So let's go down and we'll do let image icon. We'll go ahead and fetch this equals comp dot query selector. And then the selector is going to be comparison underscore underscore icon. And now that we have that element targeted and stored in a variable, we can do image icon dot style dot transform equals translate X. And then we need to concatenate a value in here, but we got to put the unit in the actual string over here. So we'll put it over here inside those quotes and then another plus sign plus sign. And then between the pluses, we can put our 
calculated value. So we're gonna do image mouse X minus image width divided by two, and that should get us our position for our icon. So it's very likely that I've typoed something in here. So we're gonna apply the code, no errors. We're gonna save and we're gonna jump up to the front end and see if everything works as we expect it to. Now we're gonna go ahead and pull up our browser console here to make sure we don't have any errors. Let's go to console. So far so good. Now if we click and drag, I expect we might see some errors here. We might have to troubleshoot a bit. So. Yep, we've got some problems here. So let's see what we have. Comp.offset width is not a function. Well, that does sound like a problem. So let's go over here and of course, remove these parentheses here from offset width. That would be definitely problematic. So let's save that and jump up to the front end. And now if we click and drag, you can see that we have our beautiful effect. And it's really smooth and responsive and looks really nice. It also, scales much better than some of the previous code that we had with the image comparison element, which part of the reason we rewrote this is when the viewport would shrink down, you get kind of a weird effect with some of the images. And now, well, it all just works perfectly. Plus, we are using actual image elements, which means they're gonna have alt text and source set and all these things. So it's definitely a much more efficient and easier to use configuration. So again, this element is available in the composite elements library, which you already have if you have an Oxygen Ultimate license. But if you don't want the library and you wanna build it yourself, this video shows you exactly how to do it. So again, this is Elijah with the Oxygen team, and that's how to build an image comparison slider element with Oxygen. Thank you very much for watching.